the Mad King Thorn. Mad King Oswald Thorn is a former king of Crida, known for his jokes and his insanity. He, has, he had an older brother, Prince Ewen Thorn, and even as a child loved to play cruel pranks on others, including feeding peppers to animals. He was often protected by Ewen, or Ewan, who defended him against claims of Oswald's cruelty. During his childhood, Oswald Thorn left his friend Samson to die by a giant worm, and when older, tricked Elon into a giant spider's web to be killed. Before being crowned, he used to play a game called Prince Oswald Says, which will eventually, which eventually became the Mad King Says. Shortly before ascending to the throne, he killed his father, and as he was crowned his first degree, was immediate death to all traitors. During his reign in Crida, uh, Crida suffered severe famine while Thorn held exquisite banquets from his courtiers. This made him unpopular with the commoners, an effect that he exaggerated by once having a number of villagers skinned alive. He traveled to Ilona on multiple occasions and is said to have had many squabbles over the years with Talawan Joko, who was an up-and-coming king in Ilona at the time. He hates the Tengu, Harveys, and Ettens, but fears termites. He once had a spat with Quetzalcat which is a giant place, by the way. Thorn was married eight times. His first wife was Lady Lyrica, a Crichton noble who originally liked Ewan and married Thorn for promises of continuing Ewan's work. They married before he was crowned. His fifth bride, Zola, was an Istani princess that hailed from Vabi, or Vabai, however you want to say it, and said to be his favorite wife. Though she was burned alive, King Thorn convinced her to accept him by holding her father hostage while wearing a mask made of mandragore shells. After Zola's death, her father, Sea Marshal Benyu, began a war with Crida, which he lost. His cruel and insane rule was ultimately brought to an end in 825 AE, when an enraged mob stormed his castle. Many his staff fled, leaving him to his death. He was killed with a carving knife. After his death, the mob is said to have been very creative with his corpse, having cut up the body. Afterwards, his palace was most and most of his possessions and courtiers were set ablaze. As a spirit, referred to as a spirit lord, he lives in the mad realm within the underworld, and because of a series of seals restricting him, he is able to return to Tyria for one for only one day each year, Halloween. The lunatic court are attempting to break the seals and bring Thorn back to the undead. The first seal was broken when Salma took the throne. When Halloween approaches, Thorn's influence keeps into Kamadan and Lion's Arch, transforming citizens into assorted monsters. He is generally accompanied by candy corn servants. In the Halloween finale, the Mad King Thorn appears in the Mushroom Circle area in both Lion's Arch and Kamadan for the whole day of October 31st. For Halloween, every three hours. Undead horsemen heralds routinely warn travelers of their master's impending arrival in both cities. When he arrives, he begins commanding people. If the players do what he wants by using emotes, they receive trick-or-treat bags. If they fail to comply, they die, but are resurrected before the next command. At the end of the game, he gives some everyone a festival hat, even though now he gives away tonics instead. The game lasts for approximately 30 minutes and includes jokes, commands, rock-paper-scissor games, and a Simon Says-like game at the end. Hey everybody, it's Sam Atari here, and I kind of like, I know I said that the part two of the Halloween thing was my final little bit on the Halloween thing, but truth be told, um, I haven't been recording lately, I've been ill, there's just a lot of things going on at the moment, and so I haven't really had that motivation to get out there and record like I used to. Um, so basically I decided that since it was Halloween, I wanted to do something still that was Halloween related. And while I was going to kind of do a, uh, a versus of, hey, this is Halloween in, um, this is Halloween in Guild Wars versus this is Halloween in Guild Wars 2, I never really got around to it. Um, I, uh, my Guild Wars 2 lags a lot, and it's, it's a lot harder to record than it is to record Guild Wars 1, just because Guild Wars 2, the graphics are just so crazy, crazy good and all that other stuff, so... I'm trying to get to the point a little quicker before my camera starts freezing like it always does because I can only record like two minutes at a time usually without it going wacky on me. Um, uh, so basically that idea was out. I think I might try it next year if I can get a better computer or if I can like clean this one out and it all work nice and neat. 
Uh, but basically what it comes down to is last night on Halloween, um, <laughs> when Halloween happens in Guild Wars, what happens is the Mad King shows up in intervals of every three hours. So every three hours, a warden comes around and goes, Mad King's coming, he'll be here in blah 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 blah. And everybody gathers in the square, and right as he's about to show up, I get kicked offline. So literally, it happened, and it pissed me off so bad. Um, but no, basically what happens is Mad King shows up every three hours, and then he does a series of games. Um, so he's sitting there in the middle of the square, and the whole point of the game is to follow his orders via emotes. So, like, he'll be like, okay, I'm gonna tell you a joke, you know, and he'll be like, the court gesture is here tonight, but luckily for you, not only am I generous, I'm also very witty. And he's, like, totally lying, because he's not generous, and he's generally not very witty either, but we all know that the Mad King's a big lying douchebag, but we all love him anyway. So, it's one of those things where he, uh... He basically, he tells you a joke, and when he starts laughing, you have to type, you know, backslash laugh, and make your character laugh. If your character doesn't laugh, everybody dies in the corpse for like a good two, like 30 seconds, and then he revives you, and he goes, okay, we'll try again. But if you laugh at his joke, then he gives you a trick or treat bag as a reward, so it, it's pretty good. You get like incentives for doing what he says. So this goes on for about, um, about 20 minutes that he does this. He just does random things. It'll be rock, paper, scissors. You'll have to bow. You'll have to meet, you know, kneel. You'll have to dance. You know, you'll have to play the drums. Like, you'll have to do something. And then after about 20 minutes, he goes, Okay, we're going to play my favorite game. And it's called It's the Magazine. Which is basically the same concept. This concept is that you are going to play, you know, Simon Says, only Mad King Says. And so, and it's also with emotes. So if he says Mad King says, you have to do what he says, like, right then and there. And it's, it's more time than the other commands are. So the other commands, you can think about it and then type it in, and then he'll go for it. Mad King says, if he says jump, type jump as fast as you can. Because if you do not jump within that minute, you are dead. Um, so, he, yeah, Mad King says. So he's like, Mad King says, you know, I want to use all be rabbit. Mad King says jump. And then, like, so many people don't type jump fast enough to that and they all die, and then he goes, okay, now I say flex, and then everybody's like, I'm going to get it this time, and so they all flex, and then all of a sudden everybody falls over. Like, I did a really good job of uh, Magic and Fez. So anyways, after the last about 10, 10, yeah, 10, 12 minutes of Magic and Fez, he goes, well, it's time for me to go, but don't cry, little Christ, I'll be back to visit every once in a while as my power is going Now you can see the Magic in both Commandon and you can see him in Line of Dark. But when he leaves, he gives you a, a token of appreciation for being so kind to him. And he gives you a tonic, which is called the Minutely Mad Tonic. Now, originally what I thought this Mad Tonic did is I thought that it literally turned you into the Mad King permanently. So what I did is I deleted my Paragon uh, character named Elric Russo, which is more of a joke. He's not a serious character, so I wasn't scared of getting rid of him. And then I created a Dervish character, which then carries a scythe. And I named him Mad Oswald, because the Mad King Thorn, his name is Os Oswald, so I named him Mad Oswald. Because I figured Mad King Oswald was taken, and so was Mad King, and so was Mad King Thorn. So I was like, I'm going to name him Mad Oswald. So so I made him, got him to the point where he could withdraw the tonic from my Zune Y chest. And it turns out that you turn into a really, really small version of the Mad King. And then it only lasts for like an hour, and after the hour's up, you turn back. Or if you leave the city that you're in, whenever you transform, then you, um, then you basically lose the tonic as well. And it doesn't work anymore. So this, this is a really sad thing, that it's just a one-time use, it's not a permanent effect. I really would like to have a more permanent tonic, but I probably will never get one in my history of Guild Wars ever. So yeah, so that's, that's basically all the Halloween was, like, that was the grand finale, basically, you know, you, you go through these quests in Lion's Arch and Commodon, you are a trick-or-treat bag, it's 50 pumpkin cookies in Commodon for the ghoulish accessory token, and then 50 candy corn pieces in Lion's Arch for the ghoulish accessory token. What I found out with this is that you cannot do it once per character. Once a character has earned 50 cookies and given, given in the ghoulish accessory token, they're finished. And so will all of your other characters, I tried to have Elric, or not Elric, I had tried to have Vince, which is my level point ranger, turn in another 50 cookies, and he couldn't even get 
twist. Another thing to remember is that in order to enjoy Halloween to its fullest, I mean, doing the Mad King is always fun because you don't have to be a high level to do it, you just have to basically be in Lion's Ark. I used my Necromancer Emily, so he's only level 15. But um, basically, what it comes down to is you, you do have to be a high level to go on these quests. Like, I'm a level 20, and I, I'm, you know, I'm the max level, and I have really good stats. And I still had a hard time with these quests. So you really have to be high level. I would say your character does have to indeed be maxed out before you can actually finish a majority of these quests. And even then you're gonna have a hard time of it. So even though if you're playing Nightfall and you're like a level 10 character and they send you on these quests, you can go ahead and do them, but chances are you're not gonna be able to complete them without someone in your party that's maxed out that can help you. And even then it's not that fun. Um, because you can't do it. You know, it kind of gets frustrating and stuff. So next year for Halloween, I think I am going to do the versus. I think I am going to do the, hey, this is Guild Wars 1 Halloween versus this is Guild Wars 2 Halloween. It's just because my computer lags so much with the game, it's kind of hard to get into the whole Guild Wars 2 scene. Plus, because I've never really completed the Guild Wars 1 um, campaign, like, or the Guild Wars 1 Halloween stuff, I've never been able to do the missions before this year um, because I sucked at them and now I'm actually pretty damn good at them, which is weird. Uh, this, this year was actually really exciting for me in Guild Wars 1 because there wasn't a lot of people that I had to get around and because uh, everybody did Guild Wars 2 and so I got to do the events and I got to play the games and, you know, do the missions without so much lag. It was actually a very enjoyable experience for me. So I, I, I am not sad at all that I might have missed the Guild Wars, or that I missed the Guild Wars 2 event and I always think Guild Wars 2 is pretty new. This is only the second year it's been out, so there's always next year, you know? So it's not that big of a deal. Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and end this here. Um, I hope you don't admi mind the little uh, the mute video or whatever. Maybe I'll try and get some music in the background before I do this, or maybe I'll upload the actual uh, video so you can have the, uh, the audio, even though all you're going to be hearing is my typing and not so much the music itself. But, uh, yeah, anyways, this has been Sammy Park playing Guild Wars for Halloween. Um, next year, hopefully, I might have Arcus in a place where he can actually play. <laughs> um, no, but I probably won't do the same thing as I did last year. But go ahead and hit like if you like the series of the Halloween parts. There's three, so make sure you watch the other two so you get full details of what goes on during Guild Wars Halloween. Also, go ahead and leave a comment. Let me know what your favorite Halloween mission has been. Let me know if you actually saw the Mad King. Whether on Guild Wars 1 or Guild Wars 2, let me know how you like the Mad King in his games. Um, and last but not least, go ahead and feel free to subscribe and connect with me online because I am trying to get back into my blogging so that I can keep everybody updated on what's going on with my life. But until that time, I do have some videos recorded um, so that I can get them up. I am still working on my Sam Talk series, which I hope to have at least one of the videos up on Sunday. But it takes so long for me to record audio because my computer gets so overheated with me recording my camera that uh, it's kind of ridiculous. But anyways, it's been Sam Atari out, and I will talk to you guys later. All right, have a happy Halloween, even though, or hope you had a happy Halloween since Halloween's over. But uh, anyways, try again.